A grad student, a postdoc, and a professor are walking through a city park and they find an antique oil lamp. They rub it and a genie comes out in a puff of smoke. The genie says, I usually only grant three wishes, so I'll give each of you just one. Me first, me first, says the grad student. I want to be in the Bahamas driving a speedboat with a gorgeous woman who sunbathed topless. Poof, he's gone. Me next, me next, says the postdoc. I want to be in Hawaii relaxing on the beach with a professional hula dancer on one side and a Mai Tai on the other. Poof, he's gone. You're next, the genie says to the professor. The professor says, I want those guys back in the lab after lunch. The lawyer and he was just waking up from anesthesia after surgery, and his wife was sitting by his side. His eyes fluttered open and he said, you're beautiful, and then he fell asleep again. His wife had never heard him say that, so she stayed by his side. A couple of minutes later, his eyes fluttered open and he said, you're cute. Well, the wife was disappointed because instead of beautiful, it was cute. She said, what happened to beautiful? His reply was, the drugs are wearing off. <laughs> Gives birth and it is just a head with no body or limbs. The father decides to love it and give it a life that it deserves. He takes it to the park and loves it as if it was a normal child. On his 18th birthday, the father decides to take him down the pub to give him the first drink. Give me a shot. The father asks the landlord, the drink is poured and the son drinks it down. Suddenly, a body pops out of the head. The father is amazed. Give him another one. The father exclaims. The son drinks and arms pop out. Another, cries the man. Then the son has all his limbs. He's stumbling around the bar. After all, he has never used them before. He stumbles outside and is promptly run over by a bus. The barman turns to the father and said, You should have quit while he was ahead. <laughs> Mrs. Melknick sprang to the telephone when it rang and listened with relief to the kindly voice in her ear. How are you, darling? It said. What kind of a day are you having? Oh, mother, said the housewife, breaking into bitter tears. I've had such a bad day. The baby won't eat and the washing machine broke down. I haven't had a chance to go shopping and besides, I've just sprained my ankle and I have to hobble around. On top of that, the house is a mess, and I'm supposed to have two couples to dinner tonight. The mother was shocked and was at once all sympathy. Oh, darling, she said, sit down, relax, and close your eyes. I'll be over there in half an hour. I'll do your shopping, clean up the house, and cook your dinner for you. I'll feed the baby and I'll call a repairman. I know who'll be at your house to fix the washing machine promptly. Now stop crying. I'll do everything. In fact, I'll even call George at the office and tell him he ought to come home and help out for once. George? said the housewife. Who's George? Why, George, your husband. Is this 555-1374? No, this is 555-1375. Oh, I'm sorry, I guess I have the wrong number. There was a short pause, and the housewife said, Does this mean you're not coming over? <laughs> decided to help St. Peter at the pearly gates. A very old man approached and Jesus asked him, How have you lived your life? The old man replied, I was a carpenter. Jesus looked closely at the old man. Is it, um... Is it you, father? The old man peered back at him. Is it you, Pinocchio? <laughs> Goes to a psychiatrist. The woman says, Doc, my husband thinks he's a dog. Can you help him? Shrink says, sure. Have him lie down on the couch. 
The woman says, oh no, he's not allowed on the couch. Freck <laughs> Survivor washes up on the beach of an island and is immediately surrounded by a group of native warriors. I'm done for, the man cries in despair. No you're not, comes a booming voice from the heavens. Listen carefully and do exactly as I say. Grab the spear from the one who is beside you and shove it through the heart of the chief. The man does so, and the remainder of the band stare in disbelief. Now what? The man asks the heavens. Now you are done for. <laughs> Got home in the early hours of the morning after a night at the local pub. He made such a racket hitting into the furniture as he waved his way through the house. But he woke up the missus. What on earth are you doing down there? She yelled down from the bathroom. Get yourself up here to bed and don't waken the neighbors. I'm trying to get a barrel of Guinness up the stairs. He shouted. Leave it till tomorrow. She shouted down. I can't, he said. I have drank it. Supermarket had a sale on boneless chicken breasts, and a woman I know intended to stock up. At the store, however, she was disappointed to find only a few skimpy prepackaged portions of the poultry. So she complained to the butcher. Don't worry, lady, he said. I'll pack some more trays and have them ready for you by the time you finish shopping. Several aisles later, my friend heard the butcher's voice boom over the public address system. Will the lady who wanted bigger bread please meet me at the back of the store? <laughs> man was walking in the country and saw a pig with a wooden leg sitting outside a barn. As he was pondering this, the pig's owner came along. The man asked the farmer how the pig got his wooden leg. The farmer said, let me tell you, that is some pig. Our house caught fire last May and he dragged my kids to safety. Is that how he lost his leg? The man asked. No, replied the farmer. But a month ago I almost drowned and that pig swam through icy water to pull me to the shore. So that's how he lost his leg? The man asked. Oh no, and just a week ago my wife's car slipped off the road onto the train tracks. That pig broke through the window and helped her out just as a freight train came through. So that's how he lost his leg, the man said. No, sir. Then how did he lose it? The man begged. Well, sir, the farmer replied, when you got a pig that terrific, you don't want to eat it all at once. <laughs> the man took his Wattweiler to the vet and said to him, my dog's cross-eyed. Is there anything you can do for it? Well, said the vet, let's have a look at him. So he picks the dog up by the ears and has a good look at its eyes. Well, says the vet, I'm going to have to put him down. Just because he's cross-eyed, said the man? No, because he's heavy, said the vet.